Today, we're going to go over the setup, use cases, and some of the commonly asked questions regarding the Precision Irrigation Controller and our TDR probes. Your PIC controller will come with a 24 volt AC power adapter. When you open up your PIC controller, the main components inside that you need to be aware of are the sensor inputs for your TDR probes, your AC inputs for your solenoid valves, your power input, and your reset and setup button. To wire the TDR probes into the controller, we will insert the red, blue, then white wires from left to right. To make it easier, you can remove the terminal first. After screwing your wires into the terminal, give them a good tug to make sure that they're secure. Once the wires are secure, insert the terminal back into the controller. Now you would just repeat this process for each sensor that you have. Next, we are going to wire the solenoids to the PIC controller. 18 gauge two conductor wire is commonly used to extend solenoid valve wiring. When stripping your wire, ensure that you do not leave too much exposed copper to prevent shorting your solenoid. Because the solenoids are AC powered, it does not matter which orientation the wires land in the terminal. Again, give a gentle tug to your wires to ensure they are secured to the terminal before plugging back into the controller. Repeat this process for all remaining valves. Next, connect the supplied power terminal to the controller. A status LED light will appear once power is connected. Anytime a probe is added or reconnected while the controller is powered on, you must press the reset button in order to register the changes. For the home grower, using a standalone pick controller is a great low-cost option to manage your irrigation events and substrate monitoring without the need for an entire commercial system. When used by itself, the pick controller can house up to four probes, one per terminal. If using the controller to only control one irrigation valve or zone, then all probes wired to the controller can be aggregated together to form an average to base the rules off of. If multiple valves are being controlled, then only one probe can be used per zone to base your rules off of. You can still use excess probes for monitoring in any zone you want. For our commercial customers, using our environment controls already, we allow the PIC controller to be ran under your existing room controllers. This greatly expands the controller's probe capacity up to 40 probes. Once probes are wired to the controller, our software will allow you to select individual probes and assign them to your set irrigation zones. If you have multiple probes per zone, you can easily aggregate them together to form a single average to base your rules off of. As you can imagine, it might be difficult to fit that many wires into the enclosure, which is why we recommend running what's called home run wires, which are basically extensions of each terminal to an outside space. When running home run wires, one important factor to remember when extending your wires is to not exceed a total length of 175 feet from the controller to the farthest TDR probe in order to prevent any possible communication issues. A single home run is ran from each terminal to a watertight junction box located optimally in the grow room. Inside this junction box is where all the TDR wiring connections can be made with adequate space. You can connect up to 10 probes per terminal. It does not matter if probes from separate zones are all tied together in this fashion, as our software is able to identify each probe individually and assign them to your specific zones. Daisy chaining TDR sensors can be wired in two separate configurations. In method one, a traditional daisy chain configuration is followed, meaning individual probes are linked together in series, one after the next. To do this, we recommend using a three-port watertight junction box such as this. We begin by securing our home run wire that is terminated directly to the controller terminal, followed by the TDR probe, and finally, the wire that we will use to link this connection with all subsequent connections. Ensure all wires are snugly seated in the watertight grommets. Next, use a wire connector to combine each of the separate wire colors together. We recommend using Wago connectors as they make for a simple and clean connection that can be easily serviced. 
Once the wire connections have been made, close up the watertight junction box and you're all set. Method 2 takes a slightly different approach. Instead of wiring the individual probes in series, we are going to use a slightly larger watertight junction box as a centralized hub to branch off all of the TDR probes for that specific terminal. This type of configuration is optimal if several probes are to be used in a smaller area. To begin, we'll secure our home run wire that is terminated directly to the controller terminal, followed by each of the TDR probes we intend to use in the immediate area. Once all probes are secured in their watertight grommets, we will combine each of the separate wire colors together, just as we did in the previous example. Again, we recommend using Wago connectors as it makes this process a breeze. When using a configuration like this, it is ideal to label each of the probes in case you ever need to replace any. Once all connections have been made, close up the watertight junction box and you're good to go. Remember, when using either of these configurations, it is important not to daisy chain more than 10 probes to a single terminal. Another frequently asked question is, how many probes do I need? We typically recommend at least one probe per 100 square feet of canopy as a minimum. However, the more probes you have in a zone, the more accurately your data will represent what's really going on with your plants. 